See, uh, here we are talking about something which we call as yeah. See, here we are talking about something which we call as particle in a box. Now the question is, what exactly do I mean by particle in a box? Okay, in general, if you are considering a classical picture, that means you can say it's a small uh, plastic ball or maybe a cricket ball confined within a plastic box or a cardboard box. And that particle is not something which we are considering here. Here, what we are saying is, we might have an electron confined in an atom or we might have a neutron or a proton confined in a nucleus. What's the dimension of an atom? Yeah. What is the dimension of an atom? 10 to the power minus 10 meter. So you can imagine how small it is, right? With naked eye, we cannot really see it. What is the dimension of the nuclei? 10 to the power minus 15 meter. So, this means that the dimension or confinement is a one-dimensional potential well. It means it's a very small dimension. And then it is observed that the behavior that we are seeing is not something which we see in our day-to-day -day life. The behavior is quantum mechanical. Okay. Now, I can say that you know when I am talking, I can I can uh, speak loudly, or I can speak very low, or I can even take a mid line, right? So I can go do all variations of uh, sound, right? But when we are talking about quantum mechanics, it will be at, let's say high or low. Mid wala jo hai, kuch chakkar hai nahi, right? This is called quantization, as all of you know. If you go to purchase a packet of milk, half liter, one liter, 700 gram ka packet to aata nahi hai, right? So this is called quantization. So this quantization is observed when we are confining our space to a very, very small location, okay? So this is the particle in a box problem. Let's decide or understand this after I tell you what exactly do we mean by potential. Now imagine this door is locked, it's from outside and all the, you know, I cannot escape from anywhere. That means I'm confined within this room. So how much potential the wall is providing? Infinity. Wall ka potential infinity hai, is ka matlab hai ki I cannot escape this room, I am confined within this room. Okay? So sometimes they also say that the wall is of infinite height. Infinite height means I cannot escape. Okay? There are different ways of saying this. So that means I'm confined within this. That means it's a potential well. Okay? One dimension no matlab kya hai? The motion is only along the x-axis. I'm not talking about y-axis or z-axis movement, right? That's why it's called one-dimensional potential. So at this level, when you're starting with quantum mechanics, this is the one that you start with. Reality mein three-dimensional loga, but yaha pe hum sirf one-dimensional ki baat karenge. So now, what kind of question I might ask? Derive the expression for energy eigenvalues. That means, if a particle is confined within this very small box, what are its possible energies? Okay? That's what we are going to analyze. So we are going to do some numerical after we finish this topic and at that point of time it will be a bit more clear. So uska energy nikalenge, iske liye hum usko bolte energy eigenvalue for a free particle in one dimensional potential well. So it means that since it's not mentioned but you have to understand that this particle is confined within this box and it's free to move within this box. Okay, so this is an ideal case. What do I mean by ideal case? I am freely moving, right? But you know, uh, there is air resistance, there is my mass of the body which is doing that kind of restriction. So I cannot say that this potential is zero for me inside the room. But in this case, what we assume is that if there is a small particle inside this, it is moving freely. There is no restriction, there is no resistance involved. And that is called a free particle. So it's a free particle. Is it clear? What do you mean by free particle? So these are the different terms that you should know. Example question as a way of the expression for energy eigenvalues, consider the following condition. This will be given. Probably this won't be given. So this means the same thing. Yeah. So it more or less means the same thing. I mean now look into this. V is equal to infinity. Matlab, potential is infinity. V is equal to infinity on this side and V is equal to infinity this side. What does it mean? that the particle cannot escape the box. It is trapped within this box. Infinity is not so potential, it can't go out. It's there. V is equal to zero inside. That means between zero and L, if X lies between zero and L, between this point and this point, the potential is zero. That means it can freely move. So this is a mathematical way of saying that it's a free particle within this box, right? 
and also check here there is no equality sign there is no equality sign if i am inside this room i cannot go and sit on the wall or stand on the wall right i cannot be on the wall i can be either on this side of the wall or that side of the wall that side is very useful because potential is infinity this is also useful so i cannot be on the wall that's the reason that there is no equality sign i cannot be on the wall or l that's why there is no equality sign okay now if we consider on the wall or outside I cannot exist here. I cannot exist here. I cannot be here. I cannot be here. That means the wave function connected with me. You remember wave function? हम लोगों ने जब de Broglie wavelength की बात की, we are talking about particles which has got a wave associated with it. That is called matter waves, right? So I have got a wave associated with me. So if I find the area where the wave is zero or the wave function is zero, मतलब वहाँ तो wave है ही नहीं. If the wave is not there, that means I cannot be there, right? Definitely, because I am there, then only the wave will exist. So the wave function is zero at x less than equal to zero means at this location and on the wall. That's why there is an equality sign. X greater than equal to zero that means in this location or on the wall. In both the cases, the shy is going to be equal to zero. So once you understand this, everything else is more or less mathematical. Before I proceed, let me tell you this. Here, when we look into potential, it does not depend on time. यहाँ जाओ, यहाँ जाओ, यहाँ जाओ. At any point of time, the potential will remain zero. Here, whichever time you consider, the potential will remain infinity. So it does not depend on time. And that is why, in order to analyze this particular problem, we have to use Schrodinger's time independent equation. We have derived two equations. Yes, sir. Dependent and independent. But यहाँ पे हम depend independent use करेंगे because the potential does not depend on time. It's only a function of position. That's it, right? So that's very important, and that's why we actually start with this. Now, what I want to find, I want to find that if a particle is confined inside this, what will be its energy, and what will be the wave function associated with it? ये मुझे निकालना है. That's the aim of this question. So this question. My theory around five to eight marks. So maybe you are just finding out the energy, doing your calculations, pass mark. Other, you are finding out the wave function, eight marks. Okay. So it's a very straightforward question, and you will see eventually that if you just remember this result, everything else is very simple. Okay. ये result कौन सा है? We have derived it. Schrodinger's time independent equation. If you remember. Now. As I told you in the other class also that whenever you derive the Schrodinger's time independent or time dependent equation, you should remember it. In quantum mechanics, we need it because if we have to analyze a system, if I want to analyze the system, I should know these equations because I cannot derive and then do this. So, zada hota hai, right? So, this is the Schrodinger's time independent equation. I have just written it short. You can also do it. D square psi d x square. Plus 8 pi square m by h square into e minus b into psi is equal to zero. This is the relation that we have derived. Now you see, this is a general relation. Now when a particle is trapped inside this box, I have to find out e. What is e? Total energy, right? Let's say it is total energy. Because energy we have kinetic, both sides, potential, both sides. And what is b? Potential energy. Here we are saying that the particle is trapped inside the box. मतलब पोटेंशियल एनर्जी कितना है जीरो है ये जीरो हो गया आउटसाइड वी डोंट नीड टू कंसीडर बिकॉज़ वी डोंट नो द पार्टिकल वी नो द पार्टिकल डस नॉट एक्जिस्ट देयर सो वी आर नॉट कंसर्ड अबाउट इट वी आर जस्ट कंसर्ड अबाउट व्हाट हैपेंस विद इन दिस सो आई कैन पुट बी इज इक्वल टू जीरो बी इज इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर अ गिवन पार्टिकल इन अ बॉक्स सो दैट मींस आई कैन राइट डाउन दिस एक्सप्रेशन राइट दिस एक्सप्रेशन इज वेरी स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड नाउ व्हाट आई कैन डू इज आई कैन रिप्लेस दिस टर्म 8 पाई स्क्वायर एम ई Divided by h square and write it down as k square. Why? Because this is a second order differential equation, and the variable here is psi, and psi is a function of x, right? So you can say x is a variable, but psi is also a function of x. So psi depends on x. So we are differentiating it with respect to x. E is a total energy here that is constant because the particle is confined in a box. यहाँ रहे, यहाँ रहे, यहाँ रहे, कहीं भी रहे, energy E रहे. So e is a constant. A pi square m is a constant because the mass of electron, let's say, is constant. A is Planck's constant. Will be constant. So everything here is constant. Psi is equal to zero. 
Now, in order to solve such differential equation, we can just consider this entire thing as a single constant, and let's just write it down as k squared. You can try doing separation of variable and all, and then try to solve the second order differential equation, which was there in your syllabus in class 12. But I don't know if your teachers have mentioned it. This is one of the most common form of second order differential equation. You can solve it, no doubt. But even if you don't solve it, you know the solution is this. If there is L or Z, it Z. Accordingly, the relations will change. But the solution to this equation will always be this. Okay? So, how can we know that? See, uh, you can put the value of psi here, you can put the value of psi here, and then do your calculation, you'll find out that this will become zero. Okay? This is going to become zero. Okay, obviously. So, what is my k square? k square is this term, so I've written it as a pi square m e by h square. If you remember complementary functions and all, that is actually used to solve second order differential equation, you can check. But at this point of time, let me tell you, advise you, you don't need to check because you don't have that much of time, you should remember this, this is important. Okay? So, derivation you can see it from Next, what is my problem here? I don't know what is k. k is written in this way, I know it. But I don't know what is k. If I know k, then only I can find out energy. Kya nahi karna tha mujhe? Energy. Energy kaha hai? Yaha. But the term k is unknown. I don't know what is k. So I have to find out k. So this is the first unknown term that I should know. What else? I should know what is a and I should know what is b. Then only I will know everything about the system. I don't know what is a and b. A and b is a general constant. K given k ka bhi mujhe nahi pata hai. So I have to do the calculations. So for that, what we do, we use something which we call as boundary condition. Abhi boundary condition So uh, you're giving an exam and I'm supposed to evaluate, okay? And it's a hundred marks question. What is my boundary? Hundred marks. It cannot go beyond hundred marks. You cannot write down beyond hundred marks. I'm confined within this room. So there is my boundary and there is my boundary, right? I cannot exist on the wall. Okay, so that's a boundary condition. So these everything is called a boundary condition, okay? What happens here is, let's say, psi is equal to zero. That means the particle cannot exist on the wall. What is the coordinate on the wall? X is zero. That means the wave function is zero at x is equal to zero. You clear? Wave function zero, x is equal to zero. Because x is equal to zero, the wall is equal to The wall is x is equal to zero coordinate. I cannot be inside the wall. The electron cannot be on the wall. It can be either this side or that side. So it cannot be on the wall, so x is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0. Psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to 0. This is called boundary condition. So we are going to use the boundary condition in order to find out A and B. Psi is equal to 0 at x is equal to L. Ye bhi true hai. Bhi nahi exist karega. So it's going to be this. Okay? So this is very important. We are bound by certain condition. That's very important. Okay? You are bound to this class because attendance stays, right? So, you know, boundary condition is a very important thing, it works everywhere. So, boundary condition is If you take this expression, make your markings correctly. If you take this expression, psi ka value 0 hai, kaha pe? X is equal to 0. Bitha te yaha pe, psi ka value 0 hai, ye x 0 bitha diya, yaha pe 0 bitha diya. So, sin 0, cos 0. Sin 0 kya ho gaya? 0. Cos 0 kya ho gaya? 1. So, ye ho gaya B, this side 0 hai, B 0. Right? B 0 ho gaya. So that means, I just put B0, that means my expression is psi is equal to A sin B is a I know what is B, B is 0. But is B0 every time? The answer is no. It depends on what kind of problem you are handling. Okay? we have to say A there, this case B is equal to 0. Right? But we don't need it, don't need to remember also because nothing else is there in your syllabus. This is the last topic that we are doing for this unit. Uh, P is equal to 0, so psi is equal to A sin Kx. Now what do I need? A or K. Chahiye. Before I find out A, let me tell you what can we do here. We will use the second boundary condition, but psi is 0, hai, but this time at x is equal to L. Psi is 0, so 0 is equal to A sin KL. KL. X is equal to L. So this is KL. Right? Now this is a problem. Hai. If A is 0, means this entire thing will become 0. What does it mean? If psi is 0, what does it mean? The particle does not exist. 
particle does not exist. But I am saying that the particle is confined in this, so I cannot say the particle does not exist. So, what is wrong? So, a cannot be zero, right? Obviously, a cannot be zero. This equation will only be satisfied if sine of k l is equal to zero. Okay? So, I will write that sine of k l is equal to zero. Okay? मतलब कुछ specific values हैं k k जहाँ पे ये zero होंगे. It's not that every value it will be zero. Every value zero होगा तो particle exist नहीं करता. So, there is only certain specific values for which of k for which this will become zero. That means State of it also about quantization. Okay, हर जगह नहीं exist कर सकता. कहीं कहीं पे ही exist करेगा, right? So we can say sine k l is equal to zero. What does it mean? Sine what values of what angles of sine give you zero? Zero, pi, two pi, three pi. मतलब k l will be zero, one pi, two pi, three pi and so on, right? So that means k l is equal to n pi, where n can be zero, one, two, three and so on. So we are writing down the general term k l is equal to n pi. So k is equal to n pi divided by l. Okay. My k square is still here now because I have taken k square here. So let's take k square is nothing but n square pi square by l square. Mark this as c. क्या नहीं पता था मुझे k. मिल गया क्यों? Because n is nothing but the energy level that we are talking about. We'll come to that later. Pi is a constant. L is the width of this box. So that means I know all the content here. That means I know k. I can replace k here. So before we do that, shy we know can be written now as a sine k l. मतलब n pi x divided by l, right? So a sine k x है ना? So x आ गया, y x आ गया. और k की जगह मैंने ले लिया n pi by l. So I replace it by n pi by l. So this is my shy. A is still unknown. I am going to find it out later. But a is still unknown. What is k square? K square is a pi square a by h square. कहाँ से मिल रहा है मुझे? यहाँ से. Don't get confused. It's here. So it's here. Let's mark this as d. And d we know. C we know. We can equate c and d. We get n square pi square by l square is equal to a pi square a by h square pi square pi square cancel. This is the energy. Now a very interesting thing to note. So this is your five marks. Okay. Up to this point, it's five marks. And very interesting thing to note here is that this energy is proportional to L square. Why I say proportional? When do I bring proportional sign here? If this is uh, not really. I'm just telling you in general. Proportional का बिकते हैं जब बाकी टाइम constant हो रहे हैं। Mass of electron constant. Mass of electron constant. Width of that potential वाले constant. Age is constant. That constant. So it will vary करेगा L square पे. So what does it tell me? It tells me about discretization. That means that if we are considering a particle, it will basically depend on an integral value. n can be 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Can n be 0? n can't be 0. So n will start from 1. So n will start from 1. Right? If energy is 0, right? n will start from 1. And this also tells me that if a particle is confined within a very small closed space, it is definitely going to have some energy. So this is an expression. And this also you are supposed to remember because you are going to get numericals on that. So we are going to do this. We are going to do some numericals. But before that, let's find out what is my shy. Okay? So as I keep on finding out shy, maybe uh, I will just uh, keep on telling as I write it down. Okay? So let's continue with this. It's still not the end because I need to find out what is the value of shy. That's very important. Okay? So we see how shy is. So what is my shy now? Right now, my shy is a psi n pi x by n. So before we proceed, uh, let me just tell you about i. Do you remember what is i? It's an imaginary number, right? So i is equal to root over of minus one. So there are systems or you know conditions where you will be getting an i on this wave function as well. Okay, we are not obviously taking such problems. But this shy alone does not have any physical significance. It does not have physical significance. No physical significance. Why I say this? Because you will be also getting you know. You are solving a second order differential equation. 
there will be situations where you will be solving the second order differential equation and then there might be a minus sign here and then when you get the solution it will be having an i term okay tab jo jo i term rahega wo imaginary ho jayega matlab the shine will have an imaginary value so if that has an imaginary value it does not have a physical significance okay that is the first idea that you should have uh, before we proceed let me just tell you something about probability all of us know the probability right i am taking a class you are inside this class that means what is the probability of your existence in that this class 100% 100% you are inside this class right but in general when we write out probability of both zero matlab no problem. it's not there and one it's definitely there right and in between it will vary so that means that the particle will be within this uh width of uh, l this is zero this is l that means the length is l what is the probability one that is the total probability okay total probability abhi let's look into shy what is shy shy is a no physical significance so what you can do is we can take another term which is called shy star which is actually called the complex conjugate complex conjugate so i hope all of you know what is complex conjugate if not let me just tell you if there is an i term here when you take i here in the original shy in the complex conjugate in place of i you will write down minus i that is called complex conjugate why do we do it because if you multiply this term with this term we are going to get a term which is i square and what is i square i square to the power minus 1 तो जो आई स्क्वायर करेगा ना वो इसको रियल क्वांटिटी बना देगा इट विल बिकम अ रियल क्वांटिटी राइट एंड व्हाट इज द लिमिट ऑफ द पार्टिकल्स एक्सिस्टेंस बिटवीन 0 एंड l ओके बिफोर आई गो टू द कंडीशन लेट मी जस्ट एक्स आस्क टू समथिंग हियर दिस इज इंटीग्रेशन एंड लेट्स आई एम टेकिंग इट फ्रॉम 1 टू 3 एंड दिस इज समेशन व्हिच आई एम टेकिंग फ्रॉम 1 टू 3 व्हाट इज द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीस टू समेशन एंड इंटीग्रेशन summation may when we are going from 1 to 3 that means we are taking the value 1 2 3 that's it baki kuch nahi le rahe summation mein yeah integration in extreme values pura le rahe right that means if you remember the geometrical interpretation of integration agar mere paas aise curve hai when we are integrating it we are taking the entire area inside this curve right that is the geometrical interpretation matlab integration is continuous you are considering every point within this system in summation is discrete yaha 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 is so samajh mein aaya and that is what we are going to use now you may tell me like why is it i am explaining this i am explaining this because there is a condition which is called the normalization condition jahan pe hum log dekhte hain ki the particle will exist anywhere in space minus infinity to plus infinity and the wave function associated with the particle is shy if i want to make the wave function real it will be shy star shy shy star it will become a real quantity and i am going to find out the particle within the x axis because it's one dimensional so dx or what is the total probability of finding out the particle in any where in space what is the total probability of finding a particle anywhere in space one what is the total probability of you existing in the entire world one right but right now since it's class time and assuming that all of us are very sincere we will be in class what is the probability of us finding outside zero, zero. zero. to class mein exist karenge matlab we are going to exist only inside the class zero to l utna hi apna le bato uske bahar nahi hoga kyunki hum log acche bachche hain class ka time na class mein baithte hain theek hai right very good so zero to l and this is shy shy star there is no physical uh, you know there is no i here so shy shy star matlab shy into shy matlab shy square dx is equal to 1 this is called normalization of t shape t shape what does it tell me the total probability of finding a particle which has got a wave function shy associated with it in a one dimensional space is 1 the particle is confined in a box 0 to l 0 to l bar to hai nahi to minus infinity to plus infinity lene ka matlab batta hi nahi 
So this is the estimation that you are supposed to do and if you do it, you are going to find out what is the value of A. So I'd like you to do the integration and find out what is the value of A that you are getting. If you can't recall, let me just tell you this. I hope you remember. I hope you remember what is the cos 2x. Cos 2x. Cos 2x. Cos 2x. Cos 2x. Cos 2x. कॉस्ट उसको इतना पसंद करता है कि वो साइंस को बाद में देता है कॉस्ट को हमेशा आगे रखता है कॉस्ट अपने को फेवर करता है साइंस बहुत अच्छी है सो यूज़ दिस यूज़ दिस पुट साइंस पे दे इंटीग्रेट फाइंड आउट व्हाट्स द वैल्यू ऑफ ए निकालो